The books tell you that's too cold for honeybees to forage, but Alaska bees don't read those books. Buzz. Buzz, buzz. It's the last week of April in Alaska. A week ago, just getting to your colonies was a struggle. Although our long days and warmer temperatures are knocking the snow down fast, most days only reach the mid-40s. The books tell you that's too cold for honeybees to forage, but Alaska bees don't read those books. They're busy bringing in willow pollen. Beekeepers across the state are checking on overwintered colonies. This is what we like to see, boxes full of strong, healthy, overwintered bees. This week, I removed the candy boards that had plain sugar as emergency winter food. I replaced them with pollen patties and sugar syrup to stimulate brood production. These colonies will triple in size over the next six weeks, and with luck, that large forager force will make plenty of honey. Package bees started arriving last week. Packages help replace winter losses for some and represent the first colony for many others. The two packages we'll see today are for my local club. It may sound strange, but we don't want any honey from them. Our goal is to turn these two packages into 12 colonies by the end of the summer, get them through winter, and then turn them into even more colonies next year. We'll turn these two packages into four colonies today by shaking half of each into a separate hive with about 5,000 bees, which is about two pounds. Each gets their own queen. In June, we'll turn our four colonies into 12 by dividing each into three splits. There are many ways to install packages, and they all work. This is Nathan's method. First, remove the feed can. If you don't shake the package, very few bees will fly out. Grab the metal tab, gently slide out the first queen cage, and shake off the bees. Note how there aren't many bees clustered around the cage. This queen was just added yesterday, so her smell is still new. Press the cage into the comb. When the wax is cold, this can be hard. It helps to lay the comb down and press firmly. Once you're satisfied, it will stay. Replace the frame, then push the frames on each side of the cage together to secure it. Half of a pollen patty goes on each side, leaving room in the middle for access to the jar feeder. Now Nathan removes the second queen cage. Notice how there are many more bees clustered on this cage. That's because she's been in the package for four days and more of the bees have identified her as their queen. This queen is nearly ready to be released. Nathan replaces the cork stopper with a marshmallow, then presses the cage into the comb. The colony will chew through the marshmallow in less than 24 hours, and once free, the queen will begin laying. Now Nathan shakes about half of the package into each hive. Putting an empty box over the hive works as a funnel, keeping bees from spilling onto the ground as they're shaken out. The bees gradually work their way down into the hive. Nathan adds a double layer of Reflectix to seal the top and keep the hive warm then a wooden inner cover to support the sugar syrup jar. A polystyrene box and lid go over the feeder to keep the syrup warm. I'll be doing regular updates on how these colonies are growing. As always, thanks for stopping by.